Hello and welcome to Off-Brand Horror. Last week, Crystal Weathers was abducted after her weather report on Off-Brand Horror. Josh and Kristen did not realize until viewing the footage after the show went off the air. Later that night, they received a video from the smiling man showing Crystal Weathers, who appears to be alive, along with Cool Josh being held hostage in an undisclosed location. We will update you as this episode goes along if any further information becomes available. Enjoy the show. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You're listening to Off-Brand Horror. I'm Josh. I'm Kristen. And uh, we just want to start off the show by once again acknowledging that there's some stuff going on uh, with Cool Josh um, in regards to the Smiling Man, and uh, we can now report Crystal Weathers as well. Um, I'm planning on editing in a little thing at the beginning of this episode uh, just to kind of go over what we know so far. Uh, Basically, Crystal was abducted right after her weather report last week. Uh, Cool Josh was abducted the week before that, and we've received some footage of them. So they're alive, and uh, we'll put in some of that footage at the beginning of the episode here, and um, if anything happens... While we're recording this, uh, we will keep you guys updated. So again, just watch out for the smiling man. He's apparently just going around abducting people left and right. Uh, something sinister, I feel, planned for Halloween. So um, yeah, that the video that we just uh, got in earlier showed that Crystal Weathers had like dumbbells or something. Girl gonna work out. Fire yeah. her way out of there. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know. She had some dumbbells, so it looked like she was trying to do something with that. But, uh, anyways, to get into the episode um, for this week, we are going to be talking about a monster under the bed. Every child's worst nightmare. Oh yeah, check under the bed for monsters. I felt like that kind of fit into the Halloween theme, uh, just because it's it's such a, a classic thing and like halloween's all about those classic spooks i feel yeah um so yeah without further ado we're going to get into that uh this was written by uh children of the woods on reddit children of the woods yeah uh they were kind enough to uh allow us to read this i sent them a message and uh confirmed that that was okay for us to read And so I'm going to get into their story right now. When I was maybe five years old, I had solidly outgrown my toddler bed and was in need of some place to sleep. So my father got an old bed frame at an auction. I don't know where the mattress came from. Knowing him, it was the one that was on the bed whenever he got it. (laughs) The first night, my mom read me a story and kissed me goodnight as usual. I didn't go to sleep immediately. The new bed was huge compared to my old one. I put my arms all the way out to the sides and they were still on the bed. I put my feet all the the way down and I couldn't feel the bottom of the bed. I started to slide down under the covers trying to find the bottom of the bed with my toes. Finally, my toes hit the bottom of the bed and I pushed them out to touch the footboard. Something touched my feet. Not the footboard. (laughs) I pulled them back, but I was a sane and rational kid and assumed it had to be the blankets bunched up down there. So I put my feet back down. Again, it touched my feet. Then it moved. Mm -mm -mm. I started screaming bloody murder. My parents came in, checked the room, and finding nothing assured me that it was either the blankets or, worst case scenario, a mouse. (laughs) But from that night on, every time I put my feet down, something was there. 
at first just all the way at the bottom, but then it started to come closer. A quarter of the way up the bed, then half. Wait, is this the same night? No, from that night on, every time I put my feet down, something was there. So it's every single oh, night. It's it progressively is... getting worse. Weird. Uh, at first, it was just all the way at the bottom, but then it started to come closer. A quarter of the way up the bed, then half, then three quarters. Until if I slept in any position other than curled up at the head of the bed, this thing was there. What? <laughs> Freaking insane, right? <laughs> Um, it grabbed my feet, it moved under the covers, every time I lifted them, it would vanish. If I put my feet off the side of the bed, I could feel it brushing them. Sometimes it would grab my feet or ankles, never pull, never leave a mark. I only vaguely remember those times since they were early on and I soon stopped putting my feet off the bed and would jump from three feet away to get into it. But I know I would not be in the bed anymore. I'd be in the living room. (laughs) (laughs) But like her parents are saying, like, it's fine. Like, you're just, you're imagining things. Yeah. I only vaguely remember those times since they were early on, and I soon stopped putting my feet off the bed and would jump from three feet away to get into it. But I know it had fingers, hands, but they didn't feel right. Not cold, just wrong. And it wasn't just me. The same thing happened to all of my friends. Sleepovers always ended up moving to the living room after they didn't heed my warnings about the foot of the bed. What in the world? My parents were no help. After the first few times checking and finding nothing, they assured me it had to be my imagination and basically gave me instructions for how to deal with the panic attack. We moved and I thought whatever it was would go away, but it didn't. One night, one of my friends was sleeping over. We were probably 13 or so. She woke me up in the middle of the night saying someone or something had grabbed her foot. I told her not to put her feet at the bottom or off the sides and went back to sleep. Other friends just said they didn't like the bed and I didn't push. I knew it sounded crazy to say something was grabbing their feet. Fast forward to when I was 15. One day I thought sleeping like this is stupid. I didn't know what was going on but I had had enough of it. So I put my feet all the way down to the end of the bed. Something touched them. I instinctively pulled them back. No, just no. By that time, I was a young punk who broke horses for a living. I wasn't scared of anything, and this was not going to fly. So I stuck my feet down there again, and it touched me. I didn't move my feet. It moved slowly upward from my toes toward my ankle. Now I was confused. It felt like a hand, but made of cloth and with no bones, like the hand of a cloth doll. What the hell was going on? I grabbed it between my feet. It was a little squishy, again, like a (laughs) doll. I started to pull it up towards the top of the bed. I don't know why I didn't just throw the covers off. I think I wanted to get a good hold of it at first. But when I sat up to get my hands down there, it pulled away. I saw it zip back under the blanket and vanish between the mattress and the footboard. There was no room for someone to be hiding in or under the bed. I lost it. 3 a.m. I yanked the mattress and box spring off and dragged the frame to the old barn where it sat for the next 20 years. Unfortunately, removing the bed didn't solve the problem. My closet light would come on and the doors began to open on their own at night. They were the kind that slide accordion style, but would pop off the track and open straight out like wings. My bed was positioned so I couldn't see into the closet with them like that. We tried to fix them again and again, but nothing worked. Even if we couldn't get them off, they popped out at night. The light was a mystery as well, as the switch was being turned and there didn't seem to be any wiring faults. Then, one night, when the doors opened, I saw a shadow against the wall. Again, no. Screw this noise. I was probably around 17 or 18 at the time. I grabbed the toolbox and took the doors down. I emptied the closet. I took the shelves out. I moved my mattress. I refused to sleep on a raised frame, by the way. (laughs) I moved my mattress into the closet. Nothing happened. Nothing happened the next night. After a few weeks, I moved my mattress back. I moved out when I was 20. One of my brothers ended up taking that room. 
A couple years ago, I noticed he had gotten that old bed frame out of the barn and was using it. When I next visited a few weeks later, the frame was gone. I asked him why. He said every time he went to bed, something grabbed his feet. So her dad bought a haunted... That's what it seems like. Her dad bought a haunted like bed frame. Like yeah. some, some kind of spirit was attached to this thing. Yeah. Uh, I commend her bravery, though, and it did seem to work out in her favor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they say that like if stuff like that happens, you have to take control you know yeah you had to be assertive yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. yeah command it you know i mean that's basically like when exorcism stuff that's what the priest is doing is like i command you to leave and yeah it's like you have to you have to boss up and that's what she did <laughs> <laughs> so you ain't about to boss me around you ain't about to tickle my feet at night that's <laughs> <laughs> what we're all afraid of too uh-huh. Like even like adults oh, don't like hanging yeah. there. I don't like hanging. I foot can't off the bed. hang a limb. I can't even like if I notice like my arm is hanging off the side of the bed, I'll pull it back. So I'm like, oh no 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 no. And then if you turn off the lights and don't have like a lamp on, you run to the bed and jump on it. Oh I know, <laughs> I know. It's freaking. And then you read a story like that, and it's like it's validated. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, parents, if your kids tell you to check under their bed, just do it. Check under their beds. Check their closets. <laughs> no, tell them to uh, stand their ground and tell the thing to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Tell them they have control over that thing. Tell it to leave. Tell it to get out. Boss up like children of the woods did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that username sounds a little culty. Yeah. It's funny because uh, our last episode... Uh, or not our last episode, a few weeks ago our episode was uh, Something in the Woods. And so whenever I saw that name, that username, it kind of stood out to me too, Children of the Woods. <laughs> uh, but we are going to go ahead and go to our first commercial break, uh, and we will see you guys right after that. We live in a very busy world. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed we don't even realize Halloween is just a few weeks away and we've dropped the ball on putting up decorations. Not to worry, we'll just head to Spirit Halloween and grab some stuff. Better late than never. Wait, where is Spirit Halloween? What recently abandoned building have they taken over this year? Toys R Us? No. Abandoned Mall? No. Where the hell is Spirit Halloween? Introducing... The Spirit Halloween Portal. With specially created off-brand horror technology, we have created this device that can turn any doorway into a direct portal to Spirit Halloween. You just lick, stick, and blip instantly to your nearest Spirit Halloween. No more driving around for hours, searching, trying to rely on your shitty cell phone service for maps to work. Just lick, stick, and blip, and you're instantly in store. Getting home is just as easy. In fact, you could technically shoplift by just throwing stuff through the portal back to your house. Not that we're encouraging that. We would just like to take a stand against capitalism is all. (laughs) Anyway, three payments of $19.99 and we'll send you this live dog absolutely free. Shopping for Halloween has never been easier. Just lick, stick, and blip. Thank you for staying tuned to Off Brand Horror. We've received a live feed link from who we can only assume to be the smiling man. We will be checking in on this live feed every so often, not knowing what the smiling man has in mind or what he wants us to watch him do. From what we can tell, checking in right now, it appears that Crystal Weathers is directing Cool Josh to put some ingredients into a shoebox. It appears to be graveyard dirt and a childhood photo of Josh. Could they be attempting to summon a demon? If so, how will that help? What is Crystal Weather's plan? How are they going to get a bone from a black cat or milk from a black cow? Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to Off Brand Horror. Um, during that commercial break, we did end up getting uh, an update on Crystal and uh, Cool Josh, and uh, we have a link to like a live feed. It seems. Um, I don't know why he wants us to see a live feed, but. Uh, we're going to be steadily uh, checking in on that and just seeing what's going on. We have no idea where they're at. I don't recognize the location at all. Um, but from what it seems, 
it seemed like they were trying to summon like a crossroads demon. Like it looked like Crystal used those dumbbells we were talking about and formed like the crossroads. And they had the shoebox and some dirt and a picture. And so it looks like they need a bone from a black cat or milk from a black cow and they could summon a demon. Like we had a commercial demon wash. Uh, Look at our commercials coming through. Yeah, about summoning a demon. But how is that going to help them? I mean, I guess you can technically get the crossroad demon to do anything for you. Yeah, so I guess they're going to make some kind of deal. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we hope that uh, we can get them back by Halloween. Uh, we are 13 days away. Ooh, 13 days away from us. Halloween. It is coming. And uh, in the spirit of Halloween, I hear that you have a story for us about jack-o'-lanterns. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to share a little Halloween folklore with y'all. Um which has to do with one of my favorite Halloween activities, carving pumpkins. Carving pumpkins. This comes from Irish folklore, and I believe Halloween itself is from Irish and Scottish Mm -hmm. traditions, so makes sense. You're welcome. (laughs) So this is how jack-o'-lanterns got started, and it is the legend of Stingy Jack. Stingy Jack. Long ago, in a small village in Ireland, lived a drunkard named Stingy Jack. He wasn't held in very high regard by the townsfolk. One evening, Satan overheard stories of the devious deeds of Jack and decided he must have this fellow's soul. Jack may have been stingy, but he was quite clever. When Satan came to collect his soul, he successfully made the case that the least Satan could do was allow him to have a final drink at his favorite pub. Jack suggested that Satan turn himself into a coin to pay the bill. Uh, you know, since he was stingy, he wasn't about to use his own money. <laughs> and then they would be off on their journey to the underworld. Satan was fooled when Jack took the coin and put it in his pocket alongside a crucifix, thereby trapping Satan in his pocket. <laughs> Which is wild to trap, like just have Satan riding around in your pocket. Yeah, that boy trick, tricked uh, Satan himself. <laughs> Uh, The devil begged and pleaded, and only upon agreeing to leave Jack alone for ten years was he released. Exactly ten years later, Satan found Jack stumbling home from the pub. With a heavy sigh, Jack looked at the devil, knowing full well that he intended to drag him to hell. Jack made the request of Satan to climb a nearby apple tree to get him a final snack to eat before the journey uh, southbound. Satan apparently, still not as clever as Jack, climbed the apple tree. While Satan was climbing the tree, Jack carved a cross into the trunk, thereby trapping Satan up in the tree. The devil begged and pleaded, and upon agreeing uh, to never take Jack's soul soul to hell, he was released. Many years later, when Stingy Jack took his last breath and died, St. Peter refused him entrance into heaven for all his evil deeds. Satan refused him entrance into hell due to their contract. In one final parting gift, Satan gave Jack an ember ablaze with hellfire. Alas, Jack was stuck roaming the earth with only a carved turnip glowing with the hellfire to light his way. That's when Stingy Jack became Jack of the Lantern. And ever since then, uh, the Irish would uh, carve turnips into scary faces and light them on their porches to ward off evil spirits and Stingy Jack. Ah, uh, so it's to ward off Stingy Jack and evil spirits. Eh? Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it started out as carved turnips. Uh, carved turnips. Yeah. It only became pumpkins when uh, they, uh, they immigrated to America because pumpkins are indigenous to uh, North America. Oh, uh, so it used to be turnips. Yeah, so I like the. I think I like the pumpkins better. I think they uh, they have a nicer look. <laughs> Ooh, that's they what look, they look like. Yeah, I guess they oxidize. It looks like a mummy. Uh, yeah, that's a. I think that one is an old one, like you know, in a museum. Is that a turnip right there? Yeah. That pretty much looks like a pumpkin. Yeah, it seems like it'd be harder to carve since they're not as big or hollow. Yeah, it's got a long nose. <laughs> uh well now would be the time that we would be going to uh our weather break which we've been doing since we started this uh podcast but uh again just to reiterate uh crystal weathers has been abducted 
by the smiling man. And holy crap, he is in here. The smiling man is on location, guys. Um, for the audio listeners, he is standing next to the TV doing the weather report. He's not saying anything. Okay, Chris, I just went paralyzed. I just went paralyzed like sleep paralysis. And he's gone. Well, that was scary. I have never gotten sleep paralysis while fully awake. Um, and that's a first. Who? Okay. Well, I'm a little shaken up, so let's let's go ahead and go to that that second commercial break. Twinkle, twinkle. You hear that, sweetheart? More munchkins at the door for some treats. Hey there, kids. And what are you all dressed as? Can we come inside? <laughs> I'm afraid not. I've got some treats for you, though. Our mommy left us. Can we come inside and use your phone? Oh, uh, well, sure. Come on in. Oh. Ah! 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 Sweetheart, run! Run! Attention. The black-eyed children are creatures that resemble children between the ages of 6 and 16, with pale skin and black eyes, who are reportedly seen hitchhiking or begging, or are encountered on doorsteps of residential homes. They will ask to come inside. Do not let them. They will be persistent. On a normal night, it may be easy to spot a black-eyed child standing on your porch asking to come in as odd. However, on Halloween night, you may assume they are simply dressed in a costume. You do not want to make that mistake. If you or a loved one has seen a black-eyed child and lived, we ask that you call or text us at 858-215-4455 and tell us your story. We will read or listen to it on Off-Brand Horror to warn other listeners of what is out there. Hi there. I am Howard Blakely. We haven't been formally introduced. You may have seen me on past episodes of off-brand horror, doing these 1-800 type of commercials about all kinds of different monsters and demons in an attempt to get you to call off-brand horror and tell us your stories. All on behalf of my employer. Now I think it's time that you hear the truth. These interactions are preventable, you see. All you have to do is believe in me. And I can blow those demons away. I am the light of the world, my friends. You can feel it deep down in your soul right now, can't you? (laughs) Well, let me do my job here, folks. Call us at 858-215-4455 and tell us your scary stories. We'll see you next week. All right, guys, welcome back to Off Brand Horror. Uh, We had a little spook before the commercial break, as you guys saw. Um, The Smiling Man was in here, and he did a weather report on behalf of Crystal Weathers, I guess. Uh, kind of like he opened the show. If You may have missed that, uh, audio listeners, but last week um, he opened the show like Cool Josh would have. He just sat there and motioned toward the TV, and then the intro song played. Um, and now he's doing the same thing. It's like he, he abducts people and then just mocks them, I guess, just pretends to do their job for them. And... Uh, He's up to something. Like I said, we have this this live feed that we've been checking in on, uh, Crystal and Josh, and they're talking, and we can't can't hear anything. I don't know if it has audio. Um, actually, it does kind of look like it does have audio. I know, 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 I know
to get this audio working. It's uh, and if we can get anything working, of course we'll we'll edit that in as well into the episode for you guys to hear. Um, but uh, we didn't we didn't get any calls this week uh, for you guys scary stories. Um, make sure you give us a call or shoot us a text at uh. 858-215-4455, and we will tell your stories here on Off-Brand Horror. Um, or, of course, if you want to send us an email, it's offbrandhorror at gmail.com. You can tell us your stories that way. Uh, tell us, do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in the supernatural? Uh, tell us your stories. Your theories. Your theories. Uh, anything like that. We're interested in reading and reacting to uh, that kind of thing. Um so uh I guess that pretty much wraps it up. Uh again, sorry guys, we we were really wanting to go big for Halloween, but we had a lot of plans with Cool Josh and Crystal and and it's just not working out cuz the smiling man has come and messed stuff up for us, but uh again, we're hoping every single week that we can get them back uh before the next week airs. So uh We appreciate you guys tuning in, and we will see you next week right here on Off Brand Horror. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching Off Brand Horror. We will leave you with this. Cool Josh and Crystal Weathers both appear to be alive. We have now figured out that there is audio to this live feed we've been checking in on. It doesn't always work well, but what we can make out is Cool Josh is explaining to Crystal Weathers that he has tried to run down this dark hallway through this door, but it seems to go on forever, and he eventually runs directly into the smiling man, who then throws him back into this room. But they appear to be opening the door again, perhaps debating trying another escape. Whoa, uh, Crystal? Do you believe in God? We don't have time for a theological debate right now, Josh. There's a black cat. What? But from what we can make out, it sounds like Cool Josh is calling to a cat. Did they find a black cat? They may just get what they want with summoning this demon, but we're not sure what that will provide. Well, we'll see you next week on Off-Brand Horror.